For example, like if your opponent is in their box with their back up against the wall, it's probably because they're about to try the phase ramp trick. I'm sure we all know this move, but I'm sure most of us wouldn't ever pay attention to such a small thing that can really give it away. What's going on, guys? This is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, Bunch of Crunch Army. I'm so excited because in this video, I'm gonna be going over some simple yet incredible game sense tips that you can use to win more fights. And I'm gonna be covering things like the importance of patience, positioning for an advantage, and how to play mind games to confuse your opponents. I'm so hyped about this. But you gotta keep in mind, you know, most of this video revolves around game sense, so you don't have to be a good mechanical player to really reap the true benefits. But it's catered towards everybody of all skill levels, and hopefully, it's gonna really help you out and just really help you to improve. This video is gonna help you out tremendously. Take my word for it, guys. But you know what's gonna help you even more? ProGuides.com, because we have structured courses, pro coaches, and live classes directly catered to make you a dominant Fortnite player. Check out the link down below. So the first thing we need to talk about is the importance of being patient during fights. You know, more often than not, guys, rush plays lead to disaster, especially against players that know what they're doing. So if we want to beat anyone at an immediate or higher level, we got to take it slow. One way that you can be patient is by playing defensively at the start of a fight. That way, man, it's going to give yourself time to learn your opponent's play style. For instance, let me tell you this, man. Like, if you're attacking an opponent's box, you don't want to go for the immediate double pickaxe swing because they might go for an instant edit play. Instead, you should drop down on a cone or ramp and just do one of two things, all right? Either pre-aim your shotgun or immediately jump back and just put down the floor to bait out their potential shot. But if you're the one on defense, you have to be careful of them doing the same thing. Okay, I get it, like in some cases, instant edits can get you a free shot on your opponent if they have their pickaxe out. But again, okay, so if they're any decent at the game though, they won't allow that to happen. So it's generally better to play defensively for the first few seconds of a fight, just an initial read on your opponent, right? You're gonna learn a lot about what kind of plays they might try to make, making it a lot easier for you to counter them later on. All right, man, another reason patience is more important than ever, it has to do everything with the charged shotgun. Since the charged shotty has an extremely slow fire rate missing shots, <laughs> that's a big deal now. Many of us panic, you know, we flick and end up just whiffing, right? But if you take an extra half a second to ensure our crosshair is on target before releasing, you can get a lot more value out of each charged shot. And the defensive playstyle is so great with the charge too. I, I don't know how many times I've just held the charge out, aiming it patiently, where my opponent will peek and my opponent just runs right into it. They just get like overzealous or something and go for the aggressive play, which rarely works for them. I guess maybe because if you lead people to do what they want, most of the time, they're going to get overconfident and probably do something stupid. All right, man, later on, we're going to get a little bit more into how you can take advantage of your opponent's overconfidence. You got to check that out later. But for now, keep in mind how crucial patience is, though, and how it's almost always better to play fights methodically, right? Take your time, man, and just look for better openings that can't easily be predicted. We've got some real pro tips coming up, including a 200 IQ trick that we just saw from FaZe Martos that can actually get you free kills. But first, all right, if you're looking for more ways to improve at Fortnite, quick reminder that our site has everything you need, man, from courses to live classes and pro coaching. You can find it all over at ProGuys.com. You have to check out the link in the description if you're ready to start your path to improving, man. Check it out. The website, it's amazing. All right, next, let's talk about positioning in fights. You always have to be conscious of your character's position because being in the right spot can play a significant role in keeping you alive and allowing you to outdamage your opponent. All right, so one method of positioning we're all very familiar with is right hand peaks. But not enough of us take advantage when we should, especially at the most vital moment, when you go to take a wall. So one thing that you can do when you're W king in enemy box is to try to position on the left side of the wall you're taking. That way, if your opponent edits on you, you can always just dip behind the cover to your left and just go for a right-hand shot. Same thing applies when you make floor edits, man. Like many of us tend to do two tile edits instead of just the right corner tile, or we'll just straight up pick any tile. But the right corner's better because it allows you to swing left for cover and have a right-hand peek to follow up with. And if you're good enough at predicting edits, you can even position in a way that counters what should typically be an advantage for your opponent. All right, for example, like if they take your wall, you can predict they're gonna do the peanut butter, AKA the top right corner edit, right? So as they're taking the wall, you can prepare by moving forward to the left so you have an opening as soon as the edit gets made. 
another example, bro, of an edit that you can counter is the Mongrel Classic. And it's sort of the same thing. Like as your wall's getting taken, you move forward into your box so that when they go to place the stairs, you end up either on top or phasing through them, which means you can get in some shots your opponent won't be ready for. But it's not only about positioning to counter edits, man. Like you also need to consider effective distances with your weapon. All weapons have their own effective ranges, right? At really which they excel. For example, like the attack shotgun pretty much sucks at anything other than point blank range. But the charge, on the other hand, can still hit like a truck from a couple tiles away. So if you know your opponent has attack and you have a charge, you want to stay away from that point blank range, right? As much as possible. Same concept applies with all the weapons. But overall, try to use your weapon range to your advantage while exploiting your opponents as much as possible. So all of those concepts so far really rely heavily on reading what's going on in the fight. Whether it's what direction your opponent's heading in or what builds are placed versus which ones are missing, you always have to be looking out for signs that let you know what your next best move is. All right, but that's the problem really like a lot of us have. Honestly, we just pay too much attention to what we're doing and not enough to what our opponent is doing. Who agrees? I know I do sometimes. Like simple things like which direction we're heading, like what weapon we're holding, whether their blueprints are out or not. All of these are indications that you should change how you play. But really, man, it's not just your opponent. It's their surroundings, too. A lot of us fail at assessing this, but it's something pros do all the time. That's why they're so good at peace control. When they go to smack a wall or just chase down an enemy, they're not only looking at the enemy, but they're also looking at which builds aren't placed so they can just get control of the fight right away. Of course, there's a lot of practice involved. I get it. You know, you, you do have to put that time in. You really, really do. But having a keen eye and really looking out for open build spots is just how pros get so good at peace control. And there are always other small things as well, like specific techniques require the user to just stand in a particular spot. For example, like if your opponent is in their box with their back up against the wall, it's probably because they're about to try the phase ramp trick. I'm sure we all know this move, but I'm sure most of us wouldn't ever pay attention to such a small thing that can really give it away. But that's ultimately how important reading the small things can be, guys. Even noticing something as tiny as that can change the outcome of your fight entirely. But all that talk about reading enemies bring us to our next concept, my friends, and that is called pre-firing. I'm sure you've seen the pro highlights by Mitro or somebody else where they land these crazy impossible pre-fires. Seriously, bro, like it looks like it's all luck, but there's actually a pretty simple trick to timing them. So to pull off a pre-fire, you need to pay very close attention to your enemy's character model. They can have a weapon out, their blueprints out, or blueprints with their pencil raised. Blueprints without the raised pencil means they're in build mode. But as soon as that pencil hand goes up, that's the indicator that they're about to make an edit. And that's when you want to take your shot. When you see your opponent's hand move to raise their pencil. I know it seems like if you do that, you know, you're going to just end up hitting their wall, which can happen. But usually, by the time you notice the movement and process it, they've completed the edit. So if you want to get pre-fires off, that's what you need to do. All right, look for the blueprints. Try to notice the pencil hand going up and take the shot. All right, guys, lastly, we got to talk about playing mind games. Come on now. Mind games are so crucial because if you can keep your opponents on their toes, wondering what move you're going to do next, like they're not ever going to have an appropriate response, right? They're just going to be left confused the entire time, which is a really, really big deal. And one of the simplest and most effective ways to play mind games is to really bait edits with your pickaxe. It's a pretty simple concept. Basically, all right, let's break it down. You go up to someone's wall, pull out your pickaxe, maybe get one swing in or even two. But when you think the edit is coming, you switch back to your shotgun and just wait for the shot. But that's not to say, you know, you shouldn't ever go for walls. If it's your first attempt at taking a wall and you think that you can get it, go for it, man. Because if you snag it quickly enough, you can follow with an edit, peace control, and then just go for the kill. Though sometimes, though, you're not going to get the wall first try. I mean, heck, like most of us that play on high ping need like 10 tries to take a wall. So at the point where you don't get the wall, like the first time, you could just bust out pickaxe baiting. And it's not just that either, man. Like there's also heal baiting. You're on the defensive end, right? You're getting pushed. So you pretend to pop a heal. When your opponent gets their pickaxe out to take your wall, you edit and get a free shot in. Bam. Even with your edits, like you can make quick adjustments that leave your opponents confused. Like let's say you do a peanut butter edit, right? You want to go for the jump shot, but your opponent is standing there waiting for you to do it. In that case, I mean, you could go back into editing, right click to reset the wall and just change it to a bottom left edit. 
Then you can go for a shot and reset your wall or just swing wide to the left and run at them. It's really tough to learn these kinds of fast edit switches, I get it, but if done right, it totally is going to catch your opponent off guard. Now, being cracked mechanically in Fortnite has started becoming less and less of a rare thing now. Being able to play mind games, man, that's honestly the next evolution when it comes to skill, bro. And that's part of the beauty this game has. Like, with all the new features and additions we always see, there ends up being so many creative ways to just mislead enemies now, some of which are still being discovered. Like this recent clip posted by Martos. He sees the grappler player off in the distance, looking to WK him. So he sets up a floor and some walls, then places his pad and throws a decoy grenade on it. The enemy has zero clue that it's a decoy, and Martos gets a free kill. Just FYI, Martos did not come up with this. Another player named Almanza showed it first, and in their example, they do the same setup, but it's in the late game and to trick any player willing to take the bait. So, there's a few ways that you can use this trick here, and I mean like right here, but obviously, <laughs> it eats up a pad, and it requires decoys. So, as for it being some super viable strat, uh, mm, uh probably not, but at least you might get an awesome clip out of it. All right, guys, we got to do a recap, like right now. Here we go. Patience is so crucial, especially at the start of a fight. So I'm going to tell you this, man. So always give yourself a few seconds when things go down to get a better read on how you need to play, okay? All right, remember this, guys. Always consider proper positioning, whether it's always playing the right-hand peak or playing to your weapon's effective range. And don't only pay attention to what you're doing, but look at your opponent, like their character model, the environment, where missing builds are, and just try to dissect every piece of information possible, got it? If you want to land pre-fires, you got to look out for the pencil hand and just wait for it to move up. When you see it, yo, it's your time to shoot. Hurry up. And lastly, mechanics are super important. But once you got that, the next step is to implement mind games into your fights. Things like pickaxe baiting, kill baiting, and so on. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I really hope you found these tips to be helpful. And if you did, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more, man. We've got so many exciting things coming out on this channel. You do not want to miss out. And once again, keep eating that bunch of crunch, and I'll see you soon.